Kopchik. Thank you very much um, for the opportunity to the chairs, vice chairs, and ranking members. Um, I uh, actually am uh, here to, to just um, talk about a bill that I submitted, an internship program for uh, autistic adults. It's 5360. I submitted testimony from a constituent in my district who brought this issue to my attention um, of the lack of opportunities for autistic adults to have um, internship programs in different areas um, so they can learn other things. But I also, um, with your indulgence, wanted to have the chief of my police, uh, Gary McNamara, and uh, Captain uh, Joseph Zabin speak about a bill that I also submitted, which is 5240 on hookah lounges. And um, I'm going to turn it over to Chief McNamara. Uh, thank you. Yes, uh, Representative. Uh, two things. Uh, when you testify, make sure you mention who you are. You put your name into the record. And for members of the public, it is a three minute. I, I certainly understand that. Thank you very much. Uh, Gary you. McNamara, Chief of the Fairfield Police Department. And I will be brief and I will submit uh, my testimony in writing. I'm here to talk about hookah lounges, but I want to clarify something. This is not a commentary on smoking, not a commentary on the health risks, and certainly not an attempt to limit hookah lounges. What it is is an attempt to regulate their operation and bring it in line with similar establishments that operate in the same fashion. Hookah lounge businesses are in operation in Fairfield and a few other Connecticut communities, and they basically allow for a social smoking of a combination of tobacco and fruit or vegetable through a water pipe known as a hookah. They are not regulated by the state. They do not serve alcohol or food so as not to come under the state's no smoking law. Connecticut no smoking law bans smoking in restaurants, cafe, and taverns. If they were to serve alcohol, they would automatically fall under that state law. Hookah lounges can best be described as a social gathering place where patrons enjoy the hookah experience and meet people of common interest and they socialize. It's the same atmosphere as a club or a bar without the ability to purchase al alcohol and therefore without state regulations. Clubs and bars, however, where alcohol is served come under state regulations that allow for, among other things, inspection of the premises. It limits the hours of operation. It deals with minors who loiter, minors, minors who consume alcohol, and limits the amount of alcohol that can be consumed, as well as a myriad of other public health concerns. These and other state regulations are in place because the state acknowledges the collateral issues that can occur if the serving and consumption of alcohol in businesses where alcohol is present is not regulated. Alcohol consumption by minors would increase, DUI activity would increase, driving under the influence would increase, and businesses would likely stay open longer, resulting in more noise, traffic, and garbage in the areas around these establishments. This is not, however, there is not, however, any state regulation regarding hookah lounges, yet they are just like bars and clubs without the ability to serve alcohol. This inability to serve alcohol, though, does not mean that there is no alcohol present. Quite the contrary, at least in Fairfield's experience, patrons are allowed to bring their own alcohol with them, free from regulations or concerns of the inspection of premises, and free from any oversight of state regulations. Bottom line with this, and certainly I'm open to questions, is that this is a bar, however, there is no state regulations because they don't serve alcohol. It has that same bar atmosphere, and yet we are limited with what we can do to enforce that. I see. I thank you for bringing that testimony before us. I know last year, um, or maybe it was the year before, maybe it was last year, we heard quite a bit of testimony and, um, um, you know, uh, from the smoking aspect, mm -hmm. if you will. But uh, the fact that this, you're saying that this business runs also and delivers alcohol? It, it, it allows people to bring alcohol in. So it, what it becomes is a nightclub yeah. that is open till 5 a.m. and has no oversight, no regulation. It gets around those liquor establishment rules that, that we follow and the state right. regulates. Right. Uh, Representative Johnson has a question for you. When you, when you speak of no regulation, you're referring to public health regulation? 
uh, public health regulations yeah, and, and regulations of enforcement. So uh -huh. in other words, there are some public health issues that come to light when you're dealing with a bar. In other words, uh, taps and how alcohol is, is uh, delivered. You know, public health regulations or other regulations, there's basically no regulation that I'm aware of. In, ter in terms of local regulation, you have uh, zoning ordinances in, in your district? There are, there are zoning, there are local regulations regarding zoning. However, once the business is established in town, there are no oversight regulations that we can utilize similar to those that we would utilize in a bar atmosphere. Did, did you uh, look at the zoning regulations to see uh, how this pl how this particular lounge was placed and whether it was in an appropriate zone? It is an appropriate zone. Uh -huh. uh, it, uh -huh. it is morphed into more than just a, a, a place people can smoke. It becomes an unregulated uh, liquor establishment. Right. Oh. Thank you. Thank you for being here and okay. thanks Thank for your you. testimony. You. Are there other questions? Uh, Representative Srinivasan. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your testimony. Uh, so, to, so that I am clear on this, the concerns here are the operation of, this, of these lounges in terms of there's no time factor and they could be open all night long, as you said, till 5 in the morning and things like that. So that is one of your concerns. Exactly. Yeah, they, they, these are allowed to operate unregulated. So their time of operation can go on till 5 o'clock in the morning and has the same collateral issues that any alcohol establishment would have if it wasn't regulated and closed at, at the time that it's that's regulated by the state to close. It's basically a nightclub that opens all night long. It becomes an after hours club where the state regulated bars close. People are now flocking to these hookah lounges because they don't come under those regulations and they bring their own alcohol in and we have no way to enforce minors drinking the interaction of that because there's no regulations that allow us to do that thank you and and and, and you brought up the second concern the question that I had was about the alcohol coming in that is unregulated because this is people the customers bringing in their own alcohol a eh, and who drinks is is unchecked because age and there's no carding nothing like that going on at these at these uh, lounges yeah there, there's no carding going on in addition to that if we suspected a legitimate business from serving minors we have the authority under state regulations to go into those bars and conduct random inspections we don't have the authority under the state regulation to do this this is a smoking club that is allowed to bring the alcohol in therefore becoming a bar that has alcohol in it and we have no authority to, to uh, regulate that. Okay. So the only time that you could do anything for them is if you catch them behaving disorderly or it's a DUI. Yeah, Josh, um, yeah Captain Joshua Zavin, Fairfield Police. Uh, I'm patrol commander, so uh, m all the uh, police response comes from my division. In response to that, uh, we do respond there for numerous uh, calls that affect the neighborhood. And uh, you are correct. The only way we could gain enter entry to the premises is uh, if there's an urgent you know, matter of, of emergency going on inside or if we're invited in. We do not have the right to inspect like a permittee of a liquor establishment where we can conduct inspection randomly of liquor, in uh, liquor establishments. Uh, the impact on the neighborhood, though, is, is, is multi level. As the chief testified to, it runs from 9 in the evening till 5 in the morning, and uh, it generates neighbor complaints from uh, idling cars outside, radios playing, uh, foot traffic, accidents, fo um, actual fights occurring either in the street, and, and a tremendous amount of litter through uh, the early morning hours. Everything from uh, liquor bottles that people are consuming before they go into the club, uh, down to trash, condoms, men and women urinating in public before they can get in. Uh, so the entire neighborhood surrounding this club is impacted till 5 in the morning, especially from Thursday nights till Saturday nights. And uh, I have dedicated many, many weekends where the majority of our resources are in that area. And of course, we have the balance of the town to protect also. It's a, it's a, um, it's a resource drain. And uh, it also is unregulated to the effect, as the chief had testified, it ranges from the ages of 16 to 60 to go in there. Thank you. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you, Representative Srinivasan. I'm sorry, could you repeat your name for the record? We didn't get Certainly. Captain Joshua Zabin. Joshua Zabin? Z-A-B-I-N. Thank you so Thank you. much. Senator Kane. Thank you, Madam Chair. Um, the bill 
in front of us says to authorize greater regulation of hookah lounges. What does that mean? What are you looking for? I think what we're looking for is for, first of all, people to recognize that this is really a liquor establishment. So some of the uh, regulations that fall under a liquor establishment should also be afforded to these establishments also. The uh, liquor, in order to get a permit to uh, distribute liquor, there's obviously an application, you're vetted, and there's regulations that you have to follow. And in turn, we're allowed steps to enforce those regulations. This skirts that by BYOB. And they bring their own, and it becomes a, it becomes a club. It becomes a nightclub. And, and so what we're looking for is more regulations along the, those side. And it is a public health concern. We have had, what, we, what we're talking about, we have had, we have had minors intoxicated ambulance calls. We have had sexual assaults of minors because you have older individuals with younger individuals who are unregulated consumption of alcohol, whereas some uh, permittees can have both, but there's certain regulations they have to accomplish to separate the two. We have no assurances and no regulations to support that. So you want to have them treated the same way as someone with a liquor permit? I think that, that at some level, whether it's the same or not, again, I, I don't know all the particular regulations from a, a liquor distribu distribution. However, I do think that if you are allowed to BYOB and bring your own alcohol into it, there should be some regulation. So Maybe. are there laws for establishments that are BYOB? There are not any that we can, we can find, no. There are, no, no, there one? are no established laws that, that say when you can bring your own alcohol in. You bring your own alcohol in. There may be some with regards to um, social clubs that are established, and again, I, I don't know for sure, but this is not a social club that, that this is just a business. It's, it's a smoking club, and it's morphed itself into, a, into an unregulated bar, and that really is our concern. And it's, it's something that people don't really think about unless they're experiencing it, is that you have all the effects of a bar, but yet none of the enforcement and none of the regulations that go with that. And it really, it hurts our ability to do anything about it. And that's really what we're looking for is somebody to understand that and look towards regulation to start bringing it more in line with a combination of no, a large amount of people. No, I understand that. I'm just trying to figure out what regulations you're looking for because um, are there, for example, are there hookah lounges that are not BYOB? I, I, I don't know. I don't. I but don't the know. one in Fairfield yeah, is. Yeah. We had two in Fairfield, and, and the one, um, one of the ones in Fairfield, uh, we had a sexual assault investigation, and as a result of that investigation, we were able to take action, and that, that establishment no longer exists. Uh, it, and now we have two others. The, the one significant that we have is the one that, that is creating the most problem for it. And, you know, look, I look at regulations. You want to have hours of operation. Those hours of operation should be consistent with establishments that serve alcohol. They shouldn't be allowed to stay open until 5 o'clock in the morning. They shouldn't become that after-hour party place that they're becoming. And the, and the state regulation should say if you operate a hookah lounge and you are bringing alcohol into it, then you have to follow all the guidance and guidelines that, that are permitted. So would who would you uh, suggest would come up with these regulations, Department of Consumer Protection? Um. I, yeah, I, I would say that those people most experienced with those regulations dealing with permittees would, would probably be the best resource. We certainly, with our experiences, could provide them with some of the problems, and then they could match our problems to what they feel would be the best avenue to take. I'm not saying regulation is going to solve all of our problems. It's just we have very little tools to handle the problems that we do encounter. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Senator. Uh, Representative Johnson. Thank you, Madam Chair. And thanks again for being here. I, I just have a couple of more follow-up questions. Um, you say that you don't have probable cause to go there when there's uh, when there are loud noises or something going on um, that is causing a neighborhood disturbance. Are you is that is that what you're saying? Or could you clarify no. that, please? Yeah. I, I was commenting on um, gaining entry. Um, unless there's an exigent circumstance, 
or, or you know, there's, you would need probable cause under exigency to enter a uh, place of such unless you had um, granted someone granted you the the exception to go in. Okay, I so if we're said, greeted at the door and he said everything's fine, the music is turned down, and we see no exigency to uh, to enter. It's you know, there's no exception to the warrant uh, requirement in that. Point. No, I understand. Yeah, I'm so just, I just I was share. just trying to clarify your statement because it seemed right. like you were saying in no circumstances would you have probable cause to go in there. That was uh, how I was hearing you. But it, you, and certainly, if you have a loud noise or some activity, uh, some exigent circumstance. Uh, that that you know the neighborhood is aware of, you'd have probable cause in that circumstance. We we have probable cause to take action on the noise. We don't have probable cause. We don't have the authority to enter. It's a private property, and it's not regulated. Unlike a, a bar, where we can go in on state regulations, we can enter a bar at any moment and inspect it. We can shut the music down. We have all the authority to do it. Turn on all the lights and ask for identification to ensure that everybody's of age. We don't have that authority because this is private property. And it's not regulated, though. It, so no state regulations give us that authority because they're not, they're not a permittee. They are a private entity. They're not responsible for the alcohol. They're just allowed to bring it in. Well, if you have a party, uh, uh, say a parent hosts a party for mm -hmm. uh, some teenagers, uh, and there's noise, you have probable cause to go in there. Do you not? No, we don't. No, we'd have to go right to the threshold. We'd knock on the door and we'd say, can we talk to a parent? There's loud noise. Then from that, if we determine that there's underage individuals uh, in the house, we may be able to take action. But keep in mind that, that we deal with that all the time. This, that's parents, poor parenting. That's parents taking, taking a, a, allowing their kids to drink if they're underage. This is an establishment that, that happens every single day and every single night, and that's what we're looking for some assistance. I, I'm just trying to make a comparison right. between the the, the, the private. They're private too. The parents sure. are. Pri it's a private yeah. home, mm -hmm. if you will, and and this is a private establishment. So I would think that probable cause uh, triggers would be this, similar. They they would, but the problem you get a noise complaint at a house. You don't have the authority to just go into the residence. You don't have the authority to go into the, the establishment. We sit there and we basically say we have a complaint of noise, you have to turn the noise down. It's, it, if we develop probable cause to go in after that fact, we can. In the other incident that we had, we had a girl who reported, a 14-year-old girl reported she was sexually assaulted within the establishment. Obviously, that triggers a different level of probable cause for us to enter regardless. And, and with respect to, we have, a, uh, we have a state statute now that addresses blight and nuisances in neighborhoods. Uh, and, and have you adopted the, that particular code in, in your district? Well, I think we would follow it as a blight issue if it be, if it um, I'm not really familiar with where that that blight would apply to it. I know that uh, I don't know whether the um, constant complaints of noise would fall under the well, blight. Well, one of the one of the provisions is that if you uh, have more than three arrests there in a certain period of time, that the town can seize the property. Yeah, and I don't again know what the arrest would be what the arrest would be for. However, I think it would be very difficult to start looking at this as a blight issue as opposed to taking steps to regulate the BYOB aspect of this. And then just just one more question. In terms of the BYOB, you, you always hear of that when you have a, a maybe a new restaurant established. So you have um, you have similar uh, rules, perhaps, with restaurants in terms of how they're kept for food and, and those mm -hmm. kinds of things. Uh, do you have food in this establishment? No. Is anybody is it prohibited? Is it brought in? Is it catered? Do they bring pizzas the, in? What, the, how is the food addressed the, there? Because I would suspect there's food brought in there in some way, shape, or form. The, the minute that they attempt to distribute food or alcohol, it comes under a different uh, venue and a regulation. So from, this, from the town regulations with regards to food. They don't serve food there. They basically open it up. You smoke hookah from the hookah pipes, and then you bring in the alcohol. And that, that really limits their exposure to any other regulations. So nobody can bring a personal pizza? Yeah, I don't know if they can or not. I'm sure they can. There's no, I don't know whether they, they put that at the door. They probably could bring that in, and they probably do um, bring food in. But it's all brought in by yourself. It's, and that's why I said in the beginning, this is not a commentary on hookah lounges and utilizing them for enjoyment of hookah. It's that they're using this as a platform to become an unlicensed and un, unregulated liquor establishment. 
Well, I think that maybe other communities, if they have these establishments being proposed, should be forewarned and create zoning rules that address them because the uh, horses out of the barn in your circumstance because they'd be grandfathered in at this point in time. Uh, so uh, you wouldn't be able to regulate them with respect to zoning. But uh, uh, so, and, and it is, there are public health issues here. So thanks so much for your testimony. Uh, Representative Miller followed by Representative Sayers. Thank you, Madam Chair. Thank you for your testimony. My question is, um, has your uh, Department of Health been uh, submitted any testimony or um, the Connecticut Association of Directors of Health has submitted testimony on this and they're very concerned with the health aspects of the hookah. Uh, everything from the smoke being flavored and therefore it appears to be more innocuous than it is uh, and also they're worried about um, people sharing the mouthpieces as a way to transmit diseases. Um, has your health director, uh, have you spoken with him or her, and have they weighed in on this at all? You want to talk? Um, thank you for the question. We were more looking at this as a law enforcement issue, um, being aware that in the past, the public health aspect has been brought up before this committee many times, and there's been much testimony in regards to that. This was a separate issue. Um, it, it, and, and it's come, you know, basically born out of how this has become a uh, unregulated liquor establishment. And, and just to roll back, we had three hookah lounges in the town. One did get shut down because of numerous criminal activity. There's another one that has no problems at all. And then we have one that has the BOYB, and it's in a residential neighborhood. And it's obvious that young people are drinking, they're smoking hookah, they're, they're getting into fights. There's always police reports about, you know, uh, fights out in the middle of the street, fights in the front of people's um, houses. And as the chief said before, it's not about the hookah. You know, someone else can argue that point um, about the public safety piece of hookah, is that they're using it as basically a bar. And if you're going to allow people to bring alcohol in, you should have to follow the same rules as any other bar. You should have to shut down at a certain time, and there should be some regulation to keep the public safe um, and then allow the police to protect the town residents. And, and, you know, just to add to what you're saying, maybe that's what we need, is we need a collective look at hookahs. Because if there is some issues with regards to them sharing uh, mouthpieces and such, then these regulations could all be inclusive and allow somebody to conduct inspections. That's all we need is somebody to be allowed to go in and inspect. And one of the regulations could, in fact, be this issue of alcohol inside these establishments. Can I further, just on that? Just a further uh, uh, comment on that. Uh, something that we talked about, it, they open till 5 a.m. was a common practice at the Fairfield Hookah is uh, at 2 a.m. they ask the general public to leave and then they host private parties where people after bars know that they can rent the uh, establishment out from two to five. So you're generally getting people that have left one bar and have now started a whole new um, atmosphere inside BYOB. Um, they, I'm certain that, that there are times they bring their, their own food in, although they don't offer it there, and uh, DJ music and so forth. And the neighbors have met with us at headquarters, at town hall. We've gone to their residences, and they are looking for law enforcement to take some type of action to, uh, to limit this so uh, they're not impacted till the wee hours of the morning. Thank you. I mean, hookahs notwithstanding, this is just sounds like um, an entity that's just, you know, we're going to party seven days a week, 24 hours a day, whatever, with no oversight. It would seem there would be something uh, in our statutes, but I'll I'll take a look too. Uh, Representative Sayers, thank you. Um, I'm really confused. The legislation talks about regulating hookah lounges, but you're talking about regulating uh, the BYOB um, aspect of it. And I'm a little bit concerned because you're telling me that there are minors that are uh, in going into smoke. It's illegal for them to purchase um, cigarettes or smoke now in the state, and yet um, these are minors. And also that they're being uh, sexually abused and that they are being, uh, there's ambulance sent because they're intoxicated and you have no reason to enter. And I'm sorry, but all of those things are illegal in the state of Connecticut. And so that, doesn't make sense 
to me at all that you have no legitimate reason to enter the premises when all these things are occurring. I, I think, I, just to clarify a little bit, obviously we take enforcement of regulations quite seriously, and we do take enforcement actions. Obviously the first one that we dealt with we shut down. So we do enter the establishment. What I want to clarify is this is not just a Fairfield, town of Fairfield issue that we're looking for the state to help us out with. This is a growing proliferation of hookah lounges, and we're witnessing what is occurring at ours. It's an establishment that people go to. It's that atmosphere. They are starting to crop up elsewhere, and we're trying to get ahead of the curve with the state help to regulate some of the issues that we've experienced. We are dealing with the issues that we're talking about. However, we look at it and say, in addition to how we deal with the enforcement, we also need to look at a statewide approach to regulating some of these issues, one of them being the bringing of alcohol into these hookah lounges. You know, the, the state basically has a regulation. If you serve alcohol, you can't smoke in there. There's probably a reason for that, and I don't know what the reason was, but you say you serve alcohol, you can't smoke. These people are now smoking, and you can bring your own alcohol in. So they're kind of defeating a lot of different regulations we have in place, and that's kind of why we're looking at it. But make no mistake, we are dealing with the issues as they do crop up and, and are taking action when they, when they do arise to that level. Well, as Representative Johnson indicated, there are times when um, a BYOB works out very well. For instance, a new resident uh, restaurant that sure. is awaiting its liquor license and has uh, a BYOB policy. Um, and it's not a problem. So to look at it in terms of a BYOB problem, um, to me, doesn't answer, doesn't really resolve it, and it hurts other entities that are acting in a responsible way um, and doing something versus this one entity um, that is not. Um, to me, is then to look at regulating hookah lounges and limits to the point where you wouldn't allow minors and you wouldn't allow um, smoking, uh, et cetera, plus a number, or, or um, alcohol, because as you indicated, in establishments that serve alcohol, you cannot smoke. However, though, a restaurant that's got a BYOB is pending a liquor license, and they're not going to stay open until 5 in the morning. Um, they're going to follow the laws that they're going to be soon following when they get their liquor license. It's um, a very different atmosphere. Not, not, and not always. And there's no regulation that says because it's BYOB that they have to close at a certain time. Most people do because in Connecticut, being the land of steady habits, we don't necessarily have a lot of people that are out after 2 in the morning. Most establishments are closed. So, um, but also no. a restaurant has a, a food license, and they do have to comply with some state statutes, whereas a hookah lounge is a smoking atmosphere, and it's perfectly fine to do just that if they're not bringing in alcohol. If they're bringing in alcohol, there should be some kind of um, regulation that allows the law enforcement to be able to make sure that people are safe there and they're not... Um, yeah. and, I'm not and I'm not questioning that part of it. What I'm saying is there's, there seems to me that there already is the ability to take an action, whether it's a fine or whatever it is, in terms of when uh, minors are smoking, becoming intoxica intoxicated, and being assaulted, um, mm -hmm. that there's already, and it creates a public nuisance, and this happens continually and numerous times, it seems to me that in itself there's already regulations that address that, even in a private establishment. Thank you, yes. Any further questions? If not, thank you all for giving your testimony today. And thank you very much for your time. And, and uh, Representative Kupchik, I did want to talk to you, too, about your autism bill. Uh, we can certainly do that uh, when we look at it again. I read your testimony uh, here on it, and I appreciate that. I know others are going to testify also, including the Commissioner of DDS. That's wonderful, because um, I think it's something that I'd love to see the committee look a little bit more into. I don't know exactly how you would want to craft it, um, if you want to may possibly give a tax incentive to businesses who would offer internships. It's just that, um, you know, the adults in my town, specifically one of my constituents, who always wanted to work in a florist shop, just wanted to work in a florist shop, and never got that opportunity until she was much older, and finally was offered an internship 
um, at a flower shop in her 50s. And so um, I think we, uh, people who are adults uh, sort of get pigeonholed, I think, in certain jobs when they have a disability and maybe this would allow them to have opportunities to, you know, have a talent that may have to explore it and be able to do something um, a little different. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you very much. Thank you. Uh, next, we have a change up here to elected officials who have changed their position on our uh, testimony.